Yikes. Why is no one talking about this? <laughs> so my crack research team has sent me a couple reports that, uh, yeah, a little bit nerve wracking. I'm not going to lie to you. And I'm not trying, look, I do not want to be a dooms pusher. I'm trying to live in reality though. Hey, this, this is, could be frustrating. All right, so let's check this out. Not frustrating. This could be a, let me get rid of this thing right here. Hold on a second. Executives at trucking giant J.B. Hunt recently sounded the alarm about a freight recession, a freight recession. And OOIDA, the owner occupied an independent driver association, uh, an American trucking association is echoing, echoing the sentiment. So these are the local, the independent owners, you know, the guys you see who have a rig and it might be a husband and wife team going in there. This isn't good. The American Fr Trucking Association is the latest to sound the alarm that a freight recession gripping the U.S. You will know, be tough for trucking companies to stay afloat. If things don't pick up by Memorial Day, analysts expect the freight market to stay around current levels the rest of the year. And the current levels, this is not growing. This is actually not good because we need a growing economy. <laughs> It'll be really tough for a lot of carriers to stay in business, says this guy. Uh, over 150,000 small trucking business owners and operators are members of OOIDA, and their warning comes weeks after J.B. Hunt posted lower-than-expected results. Company executives on an earnings call were downbeat about a broader economic slowdown that was causing a freight recession. Fewer trucks delivering goods across America. Huh. Fewer trucks delivering fewer goods. What does that mean? Okay, doesn't take a rocket science. Now, the interesting thing was, check this out. Even industry gauges are signaling a slowdown. The ATA, the American Trucking Association, for higher contract truck tonnage dropped uh, by 6% month to month of 95.8 in March, the hitting the lowest since August 2021. The pullback has been hitting the prices of commodities such as diesel, a key industrial food, uh, fuel. Interesting, is it not? So, well, why is gas prices going up or down? It's inflation. So it must be in deflation. All right, so in my book right here, I talk about trucking, as a matter of fact. Um, relax and retire, and you should get it. Because one of the huge benefits of our ability to uh, think about it. I write in my book, uh, citing, uh, who uh, wasn't Carrie Myers, is uh, Laura Bean's book, A Main Hamlet. In the, early, the turn of last century, um, the 19th to 20th century, it was a luxury to have celery and chrysanthemums in Maine in the wintertime. It was a luxury. You had to order them a long time in advance. You paid a premium. Why? Because there wasn't trucks to deliver them to you like the way we, are, we have now. There wasn't. People don't recognize how much we rely on trucking. So let me just show you what I'm talking about. Bureau of Transportation, this is from a book, by the way, right here. Continues, uh, the Bureau of Transportation Statistics tells us, trucks continue to be the most heavily utilized mode for moving goods to and from Canada and Mexico, carrying two, uh, basically two-thirds of the freight transported. Despite a 2.2% decrease from 2016, trucks accounted for a 70, 720 billion of the $1.1 trillion freight trade. And that's between flows in Canada and Mexico. Never mind what's going on in, in intra country. Rail remains second, not even coming close. Beginning in the 1920s, for refrigeration and over the road trucking changed everything. Americans were not at the mercy of the railroads anymore because predictable scheduling, cost effective for short distances, better for perishable goods that could be put in storage. Just in time delivery and door to door service. In fact, right here, I'm going to tell you right here. Um, right. Hold on a second. So, in Carrie Meyer's book, she talks about how in Illinois they had fruit and veggies, fruits and veggies in the wintertime. And I said, fruits and veggies certainly weren't being grown in Illinois during the winter. So, where are they coming from? Farther south, said Carrie. We were able to move product from point A to point B much easier because, quote, what best benefited consumers, she actually wrote farmers, but consumers in the 1920s were the improved roads, which combined with ever improving, improving automobiles and trucks made a difference in time farmers spent hauling crops and running errands. Federal aid to states and, uh, for road construction more than tripled in 1921. And so we had refrigeration, we had more highways, we could move product easier if we didn't have to rely on the insanity of the train lines, which are corrupt as all can be. But we need people to drive these things. 
and those people that drive these things are a cost. We have to pay labor. We have to pay insurance. We have to pay, obviously, the upkeep. If you're an independent guy, I mean, you got a freaking rig, dude. You think that thing is cheap? It's not like a Toyota Camry. You see what I'm saying? On top of that, the insurance on that is through the roof because, you know, I hate to say it, but you, know, you got these uh, trial lawyers. And some trial lawyers do good things. Some trial lawyers do bad things. Just a fact. I and mean, it's just the nature of the beast, man. And so the independent truckers and the truckers as a whole, you see it all over the highways, man. If you're sued, you know, if you get hit by a trucker, call me. You know, one call does it all or whatever. Call Ken. One call does it all. Uh, they got to have insurance to pay for all that stuff. It ain't cheap. All right. So now, on the other hand, we had this pandemic where we had a massive increase in just, just insanity. And even back then, I said, man, show some respect to truckers, man, because if truckers don't move product, you're screwed. You're screwed. So how do you get that mango? You think it's done by drone? It will be in the future. Well, it ain't here now, baby. And I got to worry about right now. How does that mango arrive at you? It arrives via truck. A lot of trucks are independent owners, uh, owner occupiers, uh, owner uh, independent uh, owners. And the big tr trucks too. Either way, we need people to move those products. If the people who are moving those products are shrinking because of uh they're not making enough money what happens the supply drops let's just say the demand stays the same what happens to supply if it drops what happens to prices if supply drops go up so check this out massive rate and volume drop forces rutherford county trucking company to close in a press release provided to News 13, FreightWorks Transportation Logistics says several major customers required massive rate and volume concessions in the last week. What does that mean? Our first priorities are to our employees, our customers, our creditors. Based on recent events, the most responsible path forward is to wind the company down in an expedited manner. They have 186 power units, 140 drivers. This is a big firm, dude. Massive rate and volume drop. Huh. According to the website, FreightWorks was established in April 2012 and quickly expanded to hauling a wide variety of products. In 2020, during the pandemic, the business did not furlough a single employee, but instead was able to purchase more trucks and hire more employees. In fact, last year, they paid uh, they announced pay increases. And guess what? Now they're going bankrupt. Apparently, there's a lot of trucking companies that are on the brink. So again... <laughs> What uh, the supply of trucks drops of the of the truckers the companies drops the remaining one can then charge a higher price for sure. On top of that, what does that do to demand? By the way, I just want to point out some of the demand. When prices go up, what does that do to demand? In economics, we call this a substitution effect. We said, man, I don't want that mango from I don't even know where mangoes are raised. I don't know. We'll say Mexico or freaking Los Angeles. I don't care. I'm not going to pay that because it costs so much more to ship that puppy to me. I'm not going to pay for that mango. So instead, I'm going to buy a peach from a local farmer. That freaking great. We should buy more local. Uh, but the reason the peach is from your local farmer you weren't buying to begin with is because they're price higher. Why? Because they don't make a profit in volume and quantity. You see what I'm saying? They charge a higher price per unit. Whereas a company like Walmart, Costco and stuff, they charge a lower price per unit. And as such, your local guy is going to charge more. And I, that's the way it is, man. I mean, it is the way it is. That's why buy local sounds good in theory, but when it comes to po the, the pocketbook, like, it's tough because it costs more to per unit than just go to Costco. So now what happens now is we have a contraction of the supply of drivers and driving companies. The remaining ones can charge a higher premium. That gives price to who? To you, the consumer. So now, again, you're not going to want to buy that mango chrysanthemum in Maine and freak in the middle of wintertime. Instead, you're going to say, I'm going to go buy this over here. Well, where is that going to come from? Is it either going to come from over the road hauler or is it going to come locally? And if it's coming from over the road hauler, it's still going to be more expensive because there's less over the road haulers, over the road haulers. It's just supply and demand. And if it comes locally, it's going to be more expensive because they charge per, they don't charge, they don't make their profit, they don't make their margins on, on volume. They make it on the quality of the product, frankly. All right, so check this out. So my crack team had emailed me, said she knew a trucker, and she told me um, this guy gave up the long haul because there wasn't enough to keep the rig full in both directions, which means yeah, that's how you be, be maintain profitability. 
Again, these are independent owners. These are business owners, my friends. What happens when business, small independent owners uh, go bankrupt? What does that do to the economy? It's not a growing economy. It's certainly not inflationary in that regard. It's deflationary. There's going to be less demand, less people paying taxes, less people with money in their hands. You see what I'm saying? It's just a fact. He said things are pretty bad. He does more regional hauling now. And even that is falling off. Many of the company drivers are rotating furlough so no one has to be fired. Yep. So, um, yeah, it's not being wildly reported, but uh, there's a major, this, this is a major industry to, to stumble and it'll affect the economy. And she said there's something like 9,000 companies that are or independent or something like that that are in a world of hurt right now. So check this out, though. This is what kind of, I kind of laughed at this a little bit. So going back to this one right here, the guy at the very end, um, which I don't know what to make. You don't know. I mean, no one knows. Um, Despite the ongoing destocking process, a slowing demand for goods and services means there's no identical restocking for the peak season, says a senior manager director of the global advisory firms Evercore. So that means there was no light at the end of the tunnel necessarily, but he has a pragmatic approach. Capacity uh, will certainly leave the market, but trucking is cyclical. Capacity will leave in droves, but demand will cover, will recover. Pricing will go up and capacity will come back in droves. As if almost like the CO2 people, if we just turn the knob on CO2, the temperatures will drop. Capacity will leave in droves. Demand will recover. Pricing will go up after demand recovers. Huh. That's interesting. Or a consolidation on the industry. What does that do? I just, I, okay, we'll see. I don't know. I just, is, uh, if, if trucking costs more, your price of your goods can cost more. Which means you're going to have to make your dollar stretch more which means you can buy other products, which aren't going to be that cheap either, especially if it's local. It's weird no one's talking about this, man. The economy isn't great. I don't know what to tell you, man. People are like, oh, they I mean, look, I, there's a lot of undercurrents here. There's, and I don't want that. Look, I, I, I need the economy to grow. I got bills to pay too. And the economy is, is slowing down. means my business slows down. And again, I've seen this the last three months. You can see it. You see what I'm saying? Which means I pay less. I have less disposable income to buy in my local farm over here. I pay less taxes, which means Sniffy Joe has less to send to Ukraine, which is, of course, the priority, you know, to take care of the Ukrainians as opposed to Americans. Number one priority. How does he do that if I'm not paying as much tax because my business is slow? See how this works? It's a freaking cascade, dude. I, I just, again, you got to protect the bottom line. That's all there is to it. You got to protect the bottom line. All right. Love your thoughts. We'll see you.